Hi, I'm going to show you the simplest way to link seed code calendar with a file you already have. I've grabbed this sample file from FileMe here called Contact Management, and I've just backed it up so I can get to work. Now I've extracted seed code calendar, and I'm going to place it in the same folder as the file I'm working with, and then I can get rid of these others. Once they're next to each other, let's get to work. So I've added a next contact date and next contact action to the file. Those are the dates I want to show up in the calendar. So now I've got the calendar open, and I'm going to look in the documentation for instructions on how to do this. This is our kind of basic way of integration where you paste the calendar into your file, but we also have this quick integration where you just link them together. I like to see this in a separate web viewer, so I'm going to move this off to the side so I can look at it while we get to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy some fields from the calendar sample events table, these two timestamp fields at the bottom. If you have FileMaker Advanced, you just copy and paste them into your file. If you don't, you kind of create them by hand. But I'm going to paste them in here, and after I paste them in, I'm going to edit them, removing these little comments at the front and back of the field. These are placed in there because FileMaker sees things it doesn't recognize. And then I'm going to replace the date and time fields that are in here with the ones from my solution. In this case, I don't really have end time, so I'm just going to use next contact date and next contact time for both the start and the end fields. And I'm going to do this the same thing to this second uh, calc here. If you create these by hand, make sure that these calcs return the type timestamp. And just double check to make sure that you've entered the correct fields for each one. Again, picking your date field and your time field. The other thing I'm going to do here is just double check the uh, unique ID for this table. I want to make sure that this is a number because when FileMaker created this they made it as text but they have IDs like 3 and 30 and we're searching for IDs and if you search for 3 I'm gonna find 3 and 30. So we're done with that file let's work in the relationship graph. I don't need sample contacts anymore since I just have one table I'm showing in the calendar. I double click here I'm gonna copy the name and now create a new data source. I pointed it at my file and now I find the table I want to use, pasting the original name back in so it's still called sample events. That's all I have to do in the relationship graph. Now I just have to remap a couple of layouts. The source number one layout is where we tell the calendar which fields we're looking at. So I just come in here and I find the ID field in my table. And then I work through the layout, picking the correct fields based on the labels to the left. So pick my time start, pick my date end field, and so on. Now I might not have all these fields so again I'm just going to use next contact date for both the start and the end. And for the summary this is the field that shows up on the calendar so that's where I pick next contact action and then here at the end here I grab those two fields that I pasted in from the sample events table in the calendar. Now there are a few other tabs here I might add a time here, a time end which again is just our, our next contact time. But I'm going to leave um, resources and colors alone because you can come back and kind of you know, fancy up the integration later, but I just want to show you how easy it is to get this working. So, we'll take a look at this in browse mode, see if we have any errors. Okay, well that's unindexed, but the first time we search on it, it'll index up, so that's not a problem. Taking a look at the event list, this is the layout we use when we show you the event in the calendar, and I just do the same thing here. I double click on the fields, point them at the relative, uh, excuse me, at the relevant versions of them in my table, and again, I'm not going to find everything that applies here, so I'm going to kind of do a quick version here so we can get up and running, but you may come back and clean this layout up later, skin it so that it looks like the layout's in your table, and just kind of finish up. But do be sure that you get the date and time on here, which I'm going to do right now. Get the date, and next contact date, and the time. And then I think I'll just delete the ones that I don't need, the end time and the uh, end date, because uh, that would be confusing. All right, so we look at this in browse mode. We still see some missing fields, but... It's not that big a deal because we know that we're going to finish this up later. We're pretty much done. Let's go back to the calendar and run the upon opening script. This just kind of cleans everything up and resets it. This is the script that runs when you open the file. And now if we go to the month view, we're going to see the events from our table. Pretty cool. And we click on one, and there it is. So these are all the next contact dates in my file. If I want to go a little further, you know, I can do color coding and stuff, but there's some very simple stuff you can do right away. Editing the settings script, you'll kind of go through here and change things that make sense for you, but this is where we do our filtering. So I'm just going to say that the first filter, when I look at it, I'm going to search on the next contact action field. And watch what this lets us do. We'll commit this, save the script, and again, run upon opening to just kind of cement everything back into place. And now when I go to the month, I can use the filters to kind of pull apart some of my events. I have a lot of things in here that are follow-up calls, and if I type in follow, and just tab out or hit enter. It's going to restrict the calendar to show just the events that have follow in that and then I can omit those. So again, 
at this point it's up and running you'll go back you'll clean up some layouts maybe read some of the other pages in our documentation about filtering or other things but it's very easy to get up and running with the calendar um, I hope you found this helpful and enjoy <laughs>